Good morning. Welcome to House of God and Gate of Heaven Church. Who's excited today? Woo! Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's begin with some prayer. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We're excited to be in your presence this morning. Thank you for all those who are joining with us online. Thank you for the first timers, Lord. We want to bless them. We want to welcome them. We pray, God, that your presence be in this place. We pray that you would anoint the worship, anoint the word. I pray that salvation, deliverance, encouragement, hope would be in the building and that the joy of the Lord would be our strength this morning. So we lift you up, God, and we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. I'm excited. Hallelujah.
praise the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Whew. Fire, boys. Fire in this place. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, that you allow us to have service here, Father God. Thank you that, that without you, Father, nothing is possible, Lord. We trust in you, Father God. Jesus name Lord every word that comes out of my lips today Lord let it be a word of edification for somebody's life Father God I ask you this today in Jesus mighty name Lord hallelujah thank you Lord um today I'm gonna talk about a lot of stuff <laughs> there's a lot of stuff going on right now and God has placed a lot of stuff in my heart and um, there's a lot of stuff going on with Israel. And um, I want to talk a little bit about, because this is something that's, that's been on my mind and, and a question that many people ask me. What's God's plan for Israel? What is God's plan for Israel if they rejected Jesus? Amen. I, I've asked that myself, and many people have asked me that before. Some people are not really happy with the Jewish community because they killed Jesus or they got him killed. <laughs> you know what I mean? But in my heart, I've always, I've always loved the Jewish people. I believe that they are God's people. And there's always been something special inside of me about there. And I believe... There is good and bad in every nation. Amen. Not all Cubans are good and not all Dominicans are good and not all Americans are good and it it all there's good and bad in every situation. Amen. But um if we go to the Bible um we could see how God, you know, started the whole Israel nation. Amen. And we could go straight into the book of Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 through 3. This is how Israel became a nation. Amen. It says, Now the Lord had said to Abraham, Get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to the land I will show you, and I will make you a great nation. That's where the nation of Israel came from. I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and I will curse him who curses you. And in all and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Hallelujah. Did the Jewish community get rid of Jesus? Yeah. But think about the big picture. If they wouldn't have got rid of Jesus, they wouldn't have got him killed, they wouldn't have crucified him, what would be of us today? What would have happened to the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ? It wouldn't have happened. <laughs> and most of the Bible is written by Jews. Most of the Bible is written by Jews. Think about it. And that is the book that guides me each and every day. So God has a plan and a purpose for everything that he does. And today I'm going to show you through scripture what God has revealed to me and to many people. But I want to break it down to you. And, um, and what people talk about, you know what I mean? And, and the, the title of my message today is God's Salvation Plan for Israel. Because many people, you know, even the Jews back in the day, the Christian Jews, they were like, you know, what's God's salvation plan for the Jews if they went and killed Jesus? And they don't believe in the Messiah. They, they believe the Messiah is still to come. So what is God's plan for them? You know what I mean? They were all in, you know, we're going to go to heaven, you know, the Jews... But what about the people that are not? You know what I mean? What about the people that don't serve? But through this study that, that, um, 
that we're going to do today. And, and it all started with me and my wife because we're, you know, because we're thinking about stuff and, and, and we're looking at some of the festivals of the Jewish festivals and they promote sin in their festivals. So we're like, man, you know, where is God in all this? And all this came about. And this is why I brought this message. And also, my brother was asking me the same questions. And we've been talking about this and everything that's been going on, you know, with Israel today, you, you makes you wonder. Amen? So, we're going to start in Romans chapter 9. Rachel's going to help me a little bit today. And um, first, I want to start with this verse. I'm going to read this. It's Romans chapter 9, verse 6. It says, but it is not that the word of God has taken no effect, for they are not all Israel who are of Israel. Now I want to read something that, that I got from my commentary. And it says, if God's made promises to Israel as his chosen earthly people, how can this be squared with Israel's present rejection and with the Gentiles being brought into the place of blessing. Paul says that this does not indicate any breach of promise on God's part. He goes on to show that God has always had a sovereign election process based upon promise and not just on lineal descendants. Just because a person is born into the nation of Israel does not mean that that, that he is an heir of the promise. Within the nation of Israel, God has true believers, the, rem, the remnant. So back in those days, think about it. The Jewish believers were like, so what's God's plan for the rest of the people? You know what I mean? The nation of Israel. It's only us that are believing in the Messiah. You know what I mean? So I, I, I'm going to go um, in, in the book of Romans. We're going to pretty much stay there the whole time and in ver- chapter 9 10 and 11 Paul explains exactly what God's purpose for the Jewish nation is and his purpose for the Gentiles also amen okay there's three elements that Paul considers of Israel in God's plan of salvation you ready let's start the first part of Paul's decision, let's, let's examine Israel's past privileges and God's chosen, as God's chosen people. Romans chapter 9, verse 6 through 29. And Rachel is going to read for us. Rachel Marie. Uh-huh, 6 through 29. It is not as though God's word had failed. For not all who are descendants from Israel are Israel. Nor because they are his descendants are they all Abraham's children. On the contrary, it is though Isaac that your offering will be reckoned. In other words, it is not the natural children who are God's children, but it is the children of the promise who are regarded as Abraham's offspring. For this was how the promise was stated. At the appointed time, I will return, and Sarah will have a son. Not only that, but Rebekah's children had one and the same father, our father Isaac. Yet, before the twins were born or had done anything good or bad, in order that God's purpose in election might stand, not by works, but by him who calls, she was told, the older will serve the younger, just as it is written, Jacob I loved, but Saul I hated. Amen. So think about who is Jacob. What was Jacob's new name? And Esau was the firstborn. So he was the one that was supposed to be. So it's not up to man. It's not up to us to think that, you know what I mean, that's the way it should be. You know what I mean? It's up to God. Amen. So let's keep going. What then shall we say? Is God unjust? Not at all. For he says to Moses, 
I will have mercy on whom I have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. It does not, therefore, depend on man's desire or effort, but on God's mercy. For the scripture says to Pharaoh, I raised you up for this very purpose, that I might display my power in you, and that my name might be proclaimed in all the earth. Therefore, God has mercy on whom he wants to have mercy, and he hardens whom he wants to harden. One of you will say to me, Then why does God still blame us? For who resists his will? But who are you, O man, talk back to God? Shall what is formed say to him who formed it? Why did you make me like this? Does not the potter have the right to make out the same lump of clay, some pottery for noble purposes, and some for common use? What if God, choosing to show his wrath and make his power known, bore with great patience the objects of his wrath prepared for destruction? What if he did this to make the riches of his glory known to the objects of his mercy, whom he prepared in advance for glory, even us, whom he also called, not only from the Jews, but also from the Gentiles? As he says in Hosea, I will call them my people, who are not my people, and I will call her my loved one, who is not my loved one. And it will happen that in that very place where it was said to them, you are not my people, they will be called sons of the living God. Isaiah cries out concerning Israel. Though the number of the Israelites be like the sand of the sea, only the remnant will be saved. For the Lord will carry out his sentence on earth with speed and finality. It is just as Isaiah has previously said. Unless the Lord Almighty has left us descendants, we would have become like Sodom. We would have become like Gomorrah. Hallelujah. You see, here... It's not up to because how who was born first and who wasn't born first. God is the one. He's the one that makes it. So whatever his will is, that's what's going to happen. Here, Paul maintain, maintains that God's promise to Israel has not failed because the promise was meant only for the true Israel, which means that it includes only Israel. Israelites who were faithful to God and to his promise, but not for everyone. Let's go back again to the scripture in, in Genesis 12. I'm going to read this. Now the Lord had said to Abraham, get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to the land I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. You shall be a blessing. Amen. I will bless those who bless you and I will curse you, who curses you. So be careful what you're talking about the people of Israel. Think about it. And listen to this last phrase. It says, and, you, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. What is he saying? He's saying everyone shall be blessed because of Israel. Amen. He's not saying only the Jewish people are going to be blessed. He says, and in you, because of the Jewish, the families of the earth shall be blessed. I am blessed because of them. Because my Lord and Savior came from that lineage. The lineage of David. Amen. And, and I am blessed because of that. And we could see this, we could see Jesus right here in the beginning of, 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 the, of the Bible. There's always a remnant or a portion of Israel within the entire nation of Israel who have received and accepted the promise. Amen? Yes. Paul points out that God has the right to do as he pleases with individuals and nation. He has the right to reject Israel if they disobey and the right to show mercy to the Gentiles by offering them spiritual salvation if he chooses. Let's go to Romans, let's stay in Romans 9, let's go to verse 14 through 16. I'm going to read this. What then shall we say? Is God unjust? Not at all. For he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I have mercy. I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. It, it does not therefore depend on human desire or effort, but on God's mercy. Hallelujah. It's not what we could do. It's what God's mercy has. 
Amen. He had mercy on me. And that's why I'm here. And I could say I am going to heaven with Jesus. Because God had mercy on my life. Hallelujah. The second major section analyzes Israel's present rejection of Christ and his message. Their failure to accept and respond to Christ is not a part of unchangeable plans, but a result of their own unbelief and disobedience. God did not force them to reject his plan. They chose to abandon him. Let's go to Romans chapter 9 verse 30. And we're going to go all the way into chapter 10 to verse 21. What then shall we say? That the Gentiles who did not pursue righteousness have attained it, a, righteous, a righteousness that is by faith? But Israel, who pursued a law of righteousness, has not attained it. So why not? Because they pursued it not by faith, but as it were by works. Amen. You see, they wanted, they wanted to please God by the law, by fulfilling the law. But they could not fulfill the law. That's why Jesus came. And it's by faith that we believe in Christ. Amen. We're never going to obtain that through the law. Amen. And if you see in other scriptures that I've gone through in the past, the law is is made so we could see our sin. Amen. The law was fulfilled in Christ Jesus. And the reason that the Jews didn't want to accept Christ because they wanted to stay on the law. That's why we need to be very careful of people that are trying to just say, oh, you know, we have to just follow the Torah. No, no, we have to follow Christ. Amen. The hope of glory. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. You, uh, and you're going to see right now. Look, look, look what it says. Go ahead, Rach. They stumbled over the stumbling stone, as it is written, See, I lay in Zion a stone that causes men to stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. And the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. So who's this stone? Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> they stumbled over the stone that God placed there. You know what I mean? He is, what, the rock of ages. Amen? So the, the Israelites, they stumbled over the stone. And, and we're going to see, there's so, I'm, I have a lot of information for you today. But hopefully, our eyes will be open today to see God's plan for Israel. Salvation plan for Israel and for us as Gentiles. Amen. Keep reading. Chapter but, 10. Brothers. My heart's desire and prayer to God for the Israelites is that they may be saved. For I can testify about them that they are zealous for God, but their zeal is not based on knowledge. Since they did not know the righteousness that comes from God and sought to establish their own, they did not submit to God's righteousness. Christ is the end of the law, so that there may be righteousness for everyone who believes. Hallelujah. Moses describes this in this way. The righteousness that is by the law. The man who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that is by faith says, Do not say in your heart, Who will ascend into heaven? That is, to bring Christ down. Or, Who will descend into the deep? That is, to bring Christ up from you the see, dead. You see, check this out. Here, Paul says that the language of faith does not ask a man to climb to heaven to bring Christ down. Something that would be impossible. You know what I mean? Because it's by faith. Amen. Impossible and unnecessary because Christ already came down to earth in incarnation. It is, it, we don't have to do that. That's what the Jews were trying to do. They were trying to bring him down. That you cannot bring him down. That's impossible. It is by faith that we believe and we are saved. Amen. It is by a confession of our mouths. And we're going to see that right now. Keep it going. But what does it say? The word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith we are proclaiming. That if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, 
you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. As the scripture says, anyone who trusts in him will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between Jew or Gentile. The same Lord is a Lord over all, and richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Amen. That's, that's it. That's all you need to do. That's all you need to do. Amen. Keep reading. This is powerful. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? How can they believe in the one of whom they have not even heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news. But not all the Israelites accept the good news. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our message? Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word of Christ. But I asked, did they not hear? Of course they did. Their voice has gone out into the earth, their words to the end of the world. Okay, let's stop right there because we're talking about this. The, uh, it just, I think yesterday, me and my wife uh, were talking about this. You see, the word has gone everywhere. It says it in the Bible. It says their voice has gone out into the earth, their word to the ends of the world. So Christ could come back any moment. I could be doing this video right now and just vanish. Amen? Because the word is everywhere already. It's, it's written. Go ahead. <laughs> Rachel's excited. <laughs> Again, I asked, so did, did Israel not understand? First, Moses says, I will make you envious by those who are not a nation. I will make you angry by a nation that has no understanding. And Isaiah boldly says, I was found by those who did not seek me. I revealed myself to those who did not ask for me. But concerning Israel, he says, all day long I held out my hands to a disobedient and obstinate people. You see, right there, th this is key. key. In verse 19, it says, Again I ask, did Israel not understand? First, Moses says, I will make you envious by those who are not a nation. I will make you angry by a nation that has not understand. And Isaiah boldly says, I have found, I was found by those who did not seek me. Think about that. That is the word of God. It's speaking right now. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Those who didn't seek me. Who is he talking about? He's talking about us. I revealed myself to those who did not ask for me. But concerning Israel, he says, All day long I have held out my hand to a disobedient and abstained people. Hallelujah. Finally, Paul explains in Romans 11 that the rejection of Israel is only partial and temporary. There will always be Jews who accept the re the re and remain faithful to Christ. And at a certain point in the future, the nation of Israel at large will accept Christ as their Messiah or Savior and experience God's salvation. You're like, well, where is all that at? Well, I'm going to show you. <laughs> there are several steps in this argument. God has not rejected the true Israel. Because there is a true, there is always going to be a part of Israel that is going to reject God. There's always going to be. But they're going to have their chance to repent. God is going to give them a chance to repent. Amen? I think I'm getting ahead of myself. And listen, he has a, he remained faithful to the remnant, the portion of Israel that has remained faithful to him. By accepting Jesus. Romans 11, 1 through 6. You want to read? I asked then, did God reject his people? By no means. I am an Israelite myself, a descendant of Abraham from the tribe of Benjamin. God did not reject his people, whom he foreknew. Don't you know what the scripture says in the passage about Elijah? How he appealed to God against Israel? Lord, 
They have killed your prophets and torn down your altars. And I, I'm the only one left, and they're trying to kill me. And what was God's answer to him? I have reserved for myself 7,000 who have not bowed the knee to Baal. So, to that's key there. Who have not bowed the knee to Baal. To what? Who was Baal? Idol. So too, at the present time, there is a remnant chosen by grace. Hallelujah. And if by grace, then it is no longer by works. If it were, grace would no longer be grace. <laughs> you see, as a result of their unbelief and unfaithfulness, God has allowed the majority of, the is of Israel to go their own way and become even more resistant towards Christ. Let's go to Romans. Let's go to... Let's go back to verse 7, um, chapter 11, verse 7 through 10. What then? What Israel sought so earnestly, it did not obtain, but the elected. The others were hardened as it was written. God gave them a spirit of stupor, eyes so that they could not see, and ears so that they could not hear till this very day. And David says, May their table become a snare and a trap, a stumbling block and a retribution for them. May their eyes be darkened so they cannot see and their backs be bent forever. It's crazy. It's crazy. Now, God turned, now God has turned Israel's great offense, their rejection and to Christ into an opportunity to spread a message of spiritual salvation to all the world. Think about that. So their rejection to Christ, the Messiah, was an opportunity to spread his message of spiritual salvation to all the world. Like, <laughs> that's incredible. Now, let, let's read um, verses 11 and 12. Watch what it says. Again I ask, did they stumble so as to fall beyond recovery? <laughs> Not at all. Rather, because of their transgression, salvation has come to Gentiles to make Israel envious. But if their transgression means riches for the world and their loss means riches for the Gentiles, how much greater riches will their f fullness bring? Let's skip to verse 15. Look at this. For if their rejection is the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the death? Think about that. Think about that for a second. That's so powerful. For if their being casted away is the reconciliation of the world, what will their ex expectance be but life after death? So if they did that and the whole world got saved, is God going to give them another chance? <laughs> you, understand, you understand what I'm saying? Let me show you why. Let, let's go to verses 25 through 29. I do not want you to be ignorant about this mystery, brothers, so that you may not be conceited. Israel has experienced a hardening in part until the full number of the Gentiles has come in. And so all Israel will be saved, and it is written. Re re read that again. Read that again. Are you, is anybody understanding? what th This is powerful, right? It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. It's all, it, it, it's, it's, it's all there. It's all there. It's, I'm reading. Rachel's reading the word. I'm bringing the word. I'm not bringing no theology of my understanding. I'm bringing the word of God. It's here. Listen, read that again. For I do not desire, brethren. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I do not want you to be ignorant of this mystery, brothers, so that you may not be conceited. Israel has experienced a hardening in part until the full number of the Gentiles has come in. Who is he talking to here? He's talking to us. So we need to be careful also. You understand what I'm saying? It's not, it's not about only the Jews. It's about us too. Go keep reading. Watch. And so all Israel will be saved as it is written. The deliverer will come from Zion and he will turn godlessness away from Jacob. And this is my covenant with them when I take away their sins. As far as the gospel is concerned, they are enemies of your account. But, as far as election is concerned, they are loved on account of the patriarchs. For God's gift and His call are irrevocable. Hallelujah. <laughs> They're irrevocable. 
what God said, it is. It's irrevocable. It, it's not going to, it's, oh no, because they, they've done this and they've done that. It don't matter. It's what God says. And, and the people that are, that are hating on the, on the Palestinian people, if the Palestinian people repent and turn from their wicked ways and what I read and accept Christ as Lord and Savior, they are part of the kingdom. That's right. They are part of the kingdom. They are part of the kingdom. They will take, they will take just like us Gentiles, they will be part of the kingdom. Amen? God's true and highest purpose is to have mercy on all, both Jews, Gentiles, Palestine, whoever, Iran, whoever. He will include in His kingdom all the people who put their faith in Christ and accept Him as the forgiver of their sins and Lord of their lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's keep reading Romans 11, let's go from verses 30 to 36. Just as you who were at once time disobedient to God have not received mercy as a result of their disobedience, so they too have now become disobedient in order that they too may now receive mercy as a result of God's mercy yeah. to you. Okay, you got that right? <laughs> <laughs> you see, so because of their disobedience, we receive mercy. Now, now, also, they're going to receive mercy because of their disobedience, because we have received salvation. Amen. Amen. So they're going to receive mercy also. That's what the scripture is saying. Right? Am I right or am I not right? Go ahead. For God has bound all men over to disobedience, so that he may have mercy on them all. Oh, the depth of riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God! How unsearchable is his judgments, and his path beyond tracing out! Who has known the mind of the Lord, or who has even been his counselor? Who has ever given to God that God should repay him? For from him, and through him, and to him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen. Ha hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 That is power. Several things stand out in these three chapters of the book of Romans. This discussion about Israel does not refer primarily to the spiritual condition and eternal life and death of individuals. Rather, Paul is discussing God's dealing with a nation and people in a broad historic sense. As a part of an overall plan that he has, God can use certain nation and people as he chooses depending on how they respond to him and how they relate to his standards and purpose. For example, God chose Jacob over his brother Esau for the purpose of founding and using the nation of Israel and Edom, which were descendants of these men. It, is, it, it had nothing to do with their individual eternal destiny to be spiritually saved or condemned. The point is that God has the right to place certain responsibilities on those individuals and nations that he chooses for a specific purpose. Paul expresses his heartbreak, concern, and deep sorrow over the Jews in Romans 9, 1, 2, 3. The fact that that Paul prays for his fellow Jews to be saved suggests that he did not believe that people were simply predestined, determined, and set by God beforehand to accept or reject Christ and end up either in heaven or hell. Paul desires and prayer is a reflection of God's desire for the Jewish people. Amen? In Romans 10.21. But concerning Israel, he says... In Romans 10, 21, all day long, I have held out my hand to a disobedient, abstained people. If we look in Luke chapter 19, verse 41, this is Jesus. He says, as he approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it. Note that Jesus weeping over Israel's rejection of God's ways of salvation in the New Testament does not teach us that some people have predestined to hell with no real choice 
the matter before they come to the world. Amen? All people have a legitimate choice in how to respond to Christ. We all have a choice. The most important element in this entire discussion is the issue of faith. The lost spiritual condition of the majority of Israel was not predestined or fixed by God. It was a result of their own unwillingness to submit to God's plan of salvation through Christ in faith. Amen. Many, many other people other nations, however, accepted God's ways of faith and received a right relationship with God through His Son, Jesus Christ. Because they trusted and obeyed God, they became sons of the living God. Like we read in Romans um, chapter 9, the, the prophecy of Hosea. Chapter 9, verse 25 through 26, it says, He said in Hosea, I will call them my people who are not my people. That, he's talking about us. And I will call her my loved one who is not my loved one. And in that very place where it was said to them, you're not my people, they will be called children of the living God. Amen. That's what we are called today. This fact points out the, out the importance of the obedience that results from true faith in God and accepting His plan. God still offers hope to the nation of Israel if they turn from their present unbelief and accept Christ as their spiritual sa savior like 11:23 says and if they do not persist in unbelief they will be grafted in for God is able to graft them in what again so he's talking about Israel they're going to be able to be grafted in again Amen. God also strongly warns those outside of the Jewish community who now are part of a Christian church. They too face the same possibility the Jews were experienced of being cut from salvation by their own choosing. For this reason, all who currently follow Christ must humble and continue in their faith by honoring God and obeying God in all they do. And we could see this in Romans 11, 20 and 23. It says, consider therefore the kindness and the sternness of God. He's talking to you. Consider the kindness and the sternness of God. Sternness to those who fell, but kindness to you. Provide that you continue in your kindness. Otherwise, otherwise you also will be cut off. He's talking to you. He's talking to me. And if they do not persist in unbelief, they will be grafted in for God able to graft them in again. Hallelujah. But if we don't want to follow God's ways, we will be cut off. That, that warning is valid today as Paul writes this. God's word is is full of promises and eventually restoration for Israel when the nation at large finally accepts Jesus Christ as their Messiah and Savior this will court uh, this will happen in the end of the tribulation amen and I'm going to show you the time of God's unparalleled judgment on the earth before Christ returns to the earth to conquer the forces of the Antichrist and establish his own kingdom on the earth to close to close out history. We could see this in Isaiah chapter 11 verse 10 through 16. It says, "In that day the root of Jesse will stand as a banner for the people. The nation will rally to him and his resistant place, his resting place will be glorious." In that day, the Lord will reach out His hand a second time. Think about it. To reclaim the surviving remnant of His people from Asia, from Lower Egypt, from Upper Egypt, from Cush, from Elam, from Babylonia, and from Hamath, and from the islands of the Mediterranean. He will raise a banner for the nation and gather the exile of Israel. He will assemble them, the scattered people of Judah, from the four quarters of the earth. Ephraim's jealousy will vanish and Judah's enemies will be destroyed. Ephraim will not be jealous of Judah, nor Judah hostile to Ephraim. 
they will swoop down on the slopes of Palestine to the west. Together they will plunder the people of the east. They will subdue Edom and Moab and the Amorites will be subject to them. The Lord will dry up the gulf of Egypt of the Egyptian sea with a scorching wind. He will sweep his hand over the Euphrates River. He will break it up into seven streams that no one can cross over in set that so that anyone could cross over in sandals. There will be a highway for the remnant of his people that is left from Assyria as they as there was for Israel when they came up out of Egypt. Hallelujah. Also in Ezekiel chapter 37 verse 12 through 14. Ezekiel 37 12 through 14. It says, therefore prophesy and say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. My people, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. And I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from them. I will put my spirit in you and you will live. And you will settle in your own land. Then you will know that I am the Lord have spoken. And I have done it declares the Lord. Hallelujah. And this, and this is the, the, the last one that I'm going to give you. Revelations 12.6. Hallelujah. Who's understanding this? Amen. Revelations 12 6 the woman fled into the wilderness to a place prepared for her by God where she might be taken care for a hundred a thousand two hundred and sixty days okay now now I'm gonna explain to you who the woman is and what a hundred a thousand two hundred and sixty days are here the woman refers to God's faithful people of Israel who were persecuted during the last part of the tribulation the last part is exactly 1260 days the last part of the tribulation that's the second part it's exactly that precisely half of the length of the tribulation during the tribulation the faithful of israel are god fearing jews who oppose the religion of the antichrist Sincerely searching the scripture, they will accept the truth about Jesus Christ, the Messiah, our Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. So the people will get a second chance. Amen. Amen. God will give the people of Israel a second chance. And many will come to the Lord because... If they don't take the mark of the beast and all the whole thing of the tribulation, I'm not going to get into that. But there will be those like Revelation 6, 12, 6 says, The woman fled into the wilderness to a place prepared for her by God where she might be taken care of for 1,260 days. Exactly the second part of the thing. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. Hallelujah. Now, I'm going to finish here. Look around. What's happening? What's happening in this world? Jews? Gentiles? We need to get our life straight with God. Today. Don't wait for tomorrow. Because you don't know what tomorrow holds. Amen? I was looking at this, this Jewish rabbi. And he was talking about the word Hamas. These people that, that invaded Israel. And the meaning of the word is violence. That's what the word means. Amen. They say it's not. But in the Hebrew, it means violence. And, and that word comes out in the Bible in the book of Genesis. And it talks about it in the days of Noah. That there was violence. Amen. Amen. That's where, that's where that word Hamas comes out in the Bible. It's not like in the NIV and stuff. You got to look it up in the, Jewish, in the Jewish Bible. You're not going to find it in the NIV. But that's where it comes out in the day of Noah. 
So now, let me, let, me, let, let me say something to you. What does Matthew 24, 37 says? Listen to this. This is Jesus talking. But as the days of Noah were, so shall be the coming of the Son of Man. Did the Holy Spirit drop anything inside of you right there? <laughs> you better get ready. Because Jesus is knocking on the door. I'm, I'm talking truth. This word comes out in the book of Genesis. It, in the days of Noah. And Jesus says here, but in the days of Noah, were how... But as in the days of Noah's word shall, shall be the coming of the Son of Man. So we're living in the days of Noah. Hamas means violence. And that is happening right now. I'm telling you. You need to get your life straight. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to be ready. Because Jesus is coming. Soon. And God has a plan for Israel, but He also has a plan for us. And all we need to do is have faith in Him and accept Him as our Lord and Savior and follow His commandments. This goes for the Jews and Gentiles, and I'm going to let my wife close with the altar call. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, one of the things that, that God has placed in my heart uh, this week, which... <clears throat> you know, we all are like very, like, you know, like some way or another, you know, affected by what's happening in Israel and what has happening in Gaza, what's happening in different parts of the world, how people are doing their stuff, you know what I mean? And, and how the world is calling out a savior again, right? Uh, we're calling out a savior and the beauty of the of it all is that this savior is so merciful because he has had mercy on who he has had mercy i am so grateful that in my hateful stages of life god pursued me until i was just broken and say i definitely meet you and there's some of you that god has pursued you even into the pits of hell into the mud and mire you know i don't i don't care about what nationality you are you know, I don't care if you're from the Caribbean like we are, or if you are from, from Israel, or if you are from China, or if you are from a Muslim, you know, Middle East country. I don't care if you're from Europe. God is the God of the world, and salvation is for everyone that calls on the name of Jesus. I believe wholeheartedly that every nation shall bow, every knee shall confess that there's only one Savior. I know everybody loves to look at the Father, but nobody comes to the Father except through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, Jewish people, you know, you cannot come to the Father unless it's through Jesus. Muslim, Allah, you cannot come to your Father except through Jesus. And Christians, you cannot come to Jesus itself if you don't really give up because, you know, we Christians love Jesus, but we don't surrender to Jesus. So I'm talking to Christians, to Christians, that you think that you have God and Jesus in your pocket and Jesus says you are my enemy. You are an enemy of the cross because you have idols. You disobey. So I don't know how you want to get to the Father, but you cannot come to the Father without a true relationship with, you know, a true relationship with your, um, your, your brother, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So today, if you, if you are in desperate need for answers, there is a counselor, there is a teacher that God has left with us. As a matter of fact, when Jesus, you know, was, you know, uh, um, going to heaven, he says, I will not leave you orphan. I'll give, I, I will send the teacher. And he, this teacher is here. His name is Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And when we accept Jesus Christ, he comes inside of us. And he comes and answers the question. He does not leave us orphan. He gives us the identity of knowing that we are God's children. And so the only way to obtain that is to, through repentance, through surrender. And if you are so in need of a teacher, or into trying to find answers at this hour, well, that is 
possible. That is available through the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit doesn't only teach you. His job is to get you close to Jesus Christ. Isn't that good news? For those that says, well, I don't know about Jesus. Or I don't know. Well, you know, you need to get acquainted with the one he left. You know, is the Holy Spirit. You cannot receive the Holy Spirit either if you don't accept Jesus. Why? Because this is a trinity that is not confused. If you have the Father, you have Jesus. If you have Jesus, you have the Holy Spirit. And three work in one to get you to eternal life. Isn't that awesome? Amen. And so what is that I have to do? And it's to just call on the name of the Lord. You know, in 1994, I didn't make a long prayer. I just said, help. If you are God, teach me. If you are God, change my life. Are you desperate? Because I was. And from that moment on, I did not enslave myself to see how I was going to do things, but allow the Holy Spirit to guide my way until so many years later, my spirit testified that I am a child of the living God. Because that's what, you know, true surrender does. And when the Holy Spirit moves in, he gives you that assurance that you have eternal life. You're not in two things. You, 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 little by little, everything that you wanted to do, like in the sense of uh, immorality, in sense of wickedness, in sense of what you want to put there that is against the word of God, against the, your, your, the, the morality of, of the heart of God that is to do good, to be righteous, to be just. You know, it fades because as you get closer to God in your walk, it's not by might, not by power, but by his spirit because our nature is wickedness. Is, with, is to be wicked, but Christ comes and he gives us his nature of righteousness. So when you accept Jesus Christ, how do you know that you're walking towards towards uh, 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 eternal life? Because you do not desire to do the things that you used to do. You know, this is this is for real. If you are a Christian here and you still desire to do, to do the, the, the things that you used to do, well, you got to check your salvation because one of the things that that is guaranteed that once you accept Jesus Christ, your life is completely different. The Bible says that the old life is gone, the new is a new life here. So if you're still living in an old life with a new confession, you're not a Christian. I need to tell you how it is. You are not a Christian if you're still living your old life just because you said a prayer. You need to surrender. So let us pray. And you don't have to follow my prayer. You could just say a simple, Lord, I surrender. Teach me. Help me. I need you. As simple as that. Maybe I just did, maybe I just did the prayer, right? So let us just stop there. That's as simple as that. So now I'm going, to, I'm going to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we declare today, Lord, that we are completely broken. Father, we are completely empty of advising you of how to lead our lives. Lord, we have no way out, but yet you provide the way out that is completely available through your spirit right now we say help we say lord you are the one that died and rose again for me and i receive this gift of salvation through the cross leave my sin right there and enter in resurrection power thank you because you have to teach me the things that i don't know and I thank you because everything that is happening in this world will not affect me because I'm going the right way. Whether I live or die, I must, I'm going to see you one day face to face. And I thank you that you don't leave me nor forsake me, Lord. No, I need to walk in fear, but walk with assurance and boldness that you are for me. And if you are for me, who could be against me? Now, with that said, you are saved. You are healed because one, it you know one thing is both things what do you mean you accept jesus christ and not only is he completely healing you of your righteousness and getting you to the place where you are morally you know just and correct before his eyes but he also heals you physically so it's it's is a is a is is bogo you know <laughs> buy one get one free you know what i'm saying <laughs> you know what i'm saying you you're not only healed from that from the from your heart but you also physically healed so just Anchor there, and I see you next week. God bless.